there are some pretty cruel ways of using elemental bending. Hama introduced us to bloodbending, while Zaheer literally took the Earth Queen's breath away. But what if I told you there was a forbidden earth bending technique lost to time? In our woodbending video, we hinted at a possible future topic that we'll discuss today. Some of you wrote, what's next, bone bending? While user Kyle Lind was a bit more happy about it when he wrote, finally! Yes, my friends, for better or worse, we're talking about bone bending. I'll go over the origins of the subskill, talk about the ways it could be used, and end the video on how Toph could have actually been bone bending for a few decades now. Here we go. The mere thought of bone bending is, well, for lack of a better word, bone chilling. Blood bending and Zaheer's ability to take away people's air from their lungs might have been two horrifying subskills of water bending and air bending, but at least they were rather silent. And by that, I mean they didn't come with the cracks and pops of a potentially forbidden earth bending technique. So, what could be an actual story about bone bending that would make sense in the Avatar universe? Well, I think we've come up with something pretty good. You might ask yourself why was it forbidden in the first place? Just like bloodbending was made illegal thanks to Katara's efforts, bone bending was buried away in time. It all happened way before Aang's time in an earthbending academy for boys. A young prodigy earthbender of about 14 years old called Shu Yao was at the center of quite a gruesome tragedy. Shu Yao mastered earthbending at a pretty young age, and being bored about traditional earthbending techniques, he started experimenting on himself. He was trying to find a way to control or improve his body through earthbending. After failed attempts at bending the iron within his veins, he turned to calcium. While bones are made out of collagen, which cannot be bent by an earthbender, the outer surface made out of calcium can. His first breakthrough happened when he succeeded in focusing the amount of calcium he consumed to a specific area of his bone structure. He decided that the most logical and most accessible part would be his teeth. By falling in a state of total concentration, sitting on the floor and making himself as heavy as a boulder, he succeeded in lengthening his canine teeth while strengthening them by by doing the same thing. Some of the classmates found out and called him a freak, as they usually did, but on that day they went a bit beyond the bullying they usually reserved for Shu Yao. This caused him to counterattack using earthbending, but feeling cornered by the five boys, he used his fangs against one of them, causing him to lose control and the school ended up covered in spikes made out of bones all across the building. The legend has it there were no survivors, and the Earth Kingdom literally buried the school so no one would find out. Ooh, mysterious, right? Besides going full Warhammer Titan on his school, Shu Yao wouldn't have been able to develop a bone bending if things didn't go as bad as they did for him. Now, before we get to Toph and how she uses bone bending, let's discuss other ways bone bending could work. One of the most obvious ones would be similar to how blood bending is used. Hama could take full control of her opponent, or the people she kidnapped by water bending their blood. If you remember correctly, she could levitate Katara and make her arms move in a strange but fluid way, as if she was a bag of red water. Now, earthbenders could also take over someone else's body, but every move would be quite heavy and mechanical, unless they plan on causing some damage. The worst case scenario would be something you would see in a Mortal Kombat video game. Another creepy ability bonebenders would have is to raise the dead. Well, in a way. <laughs> Imagine a bone bender controlling an army coming out of the grave or dinosaur skeletons marching towards the city. It's Attack on Titan, but make it Jurassic Park. I've talked about bending one's own bones with Shu Yao, but I wonder how much pain would be involved, and if at some point they got used to it? A bone bender would be able to create bone claws a la Wolverine, and maybe with more research get to a point where they would be able to heal themselves using the minerals within their bodies. This would allow bone benders to use their bones in various ways, just like Naruto's Kimimaro, who has control over the amount of calcium in his bones, allowing him to use his skeletal structure for combat. Bonebenders would be able to grow their bones using them as spikes that come out of their skin, and even create weapons or shields out of them. Scary stuff. There's no bone bending in Ba Sing Se, or that's what the Earth Kingdom would like you to believe, but have you ever wondered how Toph could be so in shape at her age? 
the Earthbender has more energy than a teenage avatar. There's something not quite right here. What if Toph rediscovered bone bending? After all, she is the best at seeing what other people can't. By using her seismic sense, she could have noticed the calcium in her own bones and started strengthening them. She could basically have inspired herself from, well, herself, and other techniques she's used. The first would be her earth armor. While she uses rocks to cover the surface of her body, in the case of bone bending, she would do something similar but from within. Like Kimimaro, Toph would be able to control the density of her bones, making her bone health not quite match her age. Since Toph has made her place in the world of Avatar, wouldn't she know that the technique was forbidden? Most probably. But would she follow that rule? Definitely not. While Toph formed the Metal Bending Police Force and was its first chief of police, she never was really too keen in following the rules. After retiring, she set out to travel the world in search of enlightenment, and as Korra found out, ended up settling down in the foggy swamp. She probably got tired of all the rules and went to march to the beat of her own drum, both returning to the carefree Toph we loved from Avatar, but also by rejuvenating her own body using bone bending. Of course, all this information comes from the CBR Mystery Incorporated secret files, but who knows, maybe one day it'll become canon. User Cedric White Gaming writes, We need to see the master animal of cabbage bending. Now that's an idea. What kind of animal would teach cabbage bending? The Rabaru who went straight for the cabbage merchant's cart embossing say would be a great contender, don't you think? 